President. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for having me here. It's a wonderful uh, opportunity to be the, uh, with you all, especially with my uh, former and still current colleague at Georgetown, John Podesta. Um, uh, as a recovering academic, uh, I am used to uh, speaking in 55-minute blocks, so I will try in order to keep it uh, to 10 minutes, but, uh, and I will try very, very hard to talk in uh, my new uh, uh, my new type of speak, that is talking point speak, so that uh, uh, we can all get uh, to the business. First, as a matter of context, uh, I do agree very much with all of the uh, members of the Internet Caucus who prefaced this uh, meeting by saying that we should not, in the haste of the moment, redefine the line between uh, law enforcement uh, capabilities and civil liberties. Those principles are the ones that we hold dear, and one of the things that we have uh, consistently stated during this process is that we will not let our values, the protection of freedom and the defense of liberty, to fall victim to the terrorist attacks of September 11th. And one of the key criteria that we as a department and administration has been using in formulating this package is, are we including in this package, or are we proposing something that 20 years from now, we may look back and say we regret? And uh, uh, that has been the criteria that keeps us intellectually honest at a practical matter, to be, to be true to our values uh, at a theoretical uh, uh, matter. And so you will uh, notice that the, what we have proposed as a package here is a very limited, very measured, very restrained set of needs, both in the immediate term and in the uh, uh, intermediate term, in order to fight terrorism. And uh, 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 Congressman Goodlatte and uh, Senator Burns uh, was right to uh, note and I confirm that encryption is not in the package. Why? We have, we certainly, as a department and as a, uh, and as components of the department, have views on this. We simply uh, did not include it because it would not be, fit the core criteria of our, uh, uh, of what we are trying to accomplish within this, uh, within this package. That does not mean that we would not come back to you at a later day in order to, uh, uh, to seek, uh, uh, to advance that debate. But this package is appropriately measured and, and sufficiently pared down in order to ask for only those things which we need in the short term and in, in the intermediate term to fight terrorism. I'm asked to talk specifically about Title III, uh, but since there, there isn't very much that we do in Title III because one of the things that we aim to do is not to redefine the substantive protections of privacy in this bill consistent with what the uh, Congressman Goodlatte, Congressman Boucher, and Senator uh, Burns has uh, stated as a principle. There, we have not proposed very much uh, uh, in Title III. Uh, as a matter of fact, the current draft of both the uh, uh, the Sensenbrenner uh, Conyers uh, bill, and also I understand the, the uh, circulating draft of the uh, Senate Judiciary bill does not have one of the one of the provisions that was originally uh, uh, included in the package, uh, which is the use of foreign uh, wiretaps information in uh, in court. And we agree with that omission from the uh, uh, from final package. And so there really isn't much that we can talk about in Title III except for. My absolute uh, assurance, inserted into the language that we uh, advocated in, this, uh, in the uh, Sense of Brenner Conyers uh, uh, bill, that content is still protected by the substantive protections of Title III. That is explicit, that was implicit in our proposal. We, at the request of the, the, Senate, of the House Committee, uh, Judiciary Committee, we provided language to make that absolutely explicit and crystal clear. Um, but let me just step back one step, uh, one step and take the opportunity to explain a little bit about the Title III regime. What Title III does is give the department the ability to conduct wiretaps, straight, uh, straightforward, get the content of communications, oral, electronic, or uh, 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 telephonic, uh, analog telephonic uh, communication. Because we're talking about content, which has uh, privacy concerns and constitutional uh, protection, the Title, III, the Title III regime is quite restrictive. That is, a Title III order is only issued if we have probable cause, the government shows that they have a probable cause to believe that one, an individual is committing or has committed or is about to commit a particular offense enumerated in 18 U.S.C. 2516. Two, that particular communications concerning that offense will be obtained through the interception. Three, that normal investigative procedures are unlikely to succeed. And four, that there is probable cause for belief 
that the facility, the telephone, from which uh, the communications we intercepted is being used in connection with commission of the offense. So fairly restrictive standard in order to get to the content of the uh, communications. And we fully agree with those substantive protections. Like I said, we are not seeking to redefine the line between law enforcement uh, capability and substantive privacy or civil liberties uh, protections that are existing under, uh, under the current law. In addition to these substantive standards, there are procedural standards that are uh, 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 mandated by Title III uh, interceptions. One of those, the most significant is that an application for a Title III authorization has to be signed personally by a person at the Deputy Assistant Attorney General level or above. I see Jonathan Meyer sitting uh, back there, who uh, uh, prior until, the, uh, prior until the, uh, several months ago was a Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the Office of Legal Policy un until he found greener pastures with Senator Biden. And uh, 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 we congratulate him on his move, but that shows the, the, the importance of Title III in the sense that it has to be somebody at Jonathan's level or above within the Department of Justice in order to sign even an application for an authorization. Most normal things, you just have a, uh, uh, an AUSA or even a U.S. attorney and not have to go to main justice in order to get the, uh, uh, in order to get the uh, application. The, in contrast to that, on a pen register or a trap and trace device, as Congressman Goodlatte pointed out, the case of Smith v. Maryland draws a bright line between content and non-content. Trap and trace and pen register has found, the court found in Smith v. Maryland, clearly, that the person does not have a privacy interest in the dialing and routing information that is captured by a pen register or a trap and trace device. And so hence this clear line between content controlled by Title III and pen register and trap and trace uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the more uh, relaxed standard uh, of uh, court authorization for such order. This is not a distinction only in theory, but in practice it is of critical distinction. Why? Because pen, and trap, uh, pen registers and trap and trace devices are what law enforcement personnel use at the very beginning stages of the investigation to determine whether or not there is probable cause to go in and get a Title III authorization. Because there is no privacy interest in this information, the regime under existing law is that it is a much more relaxed standard. There is no substantive privacy interest, either constitutional or, as we all agree, I think, policy with respect to the dialing and routing information in the analog world for such information. There is a more relaxed standard so that we can use the pen uh, register and trap and trace in order to acquire evidence constituting probable cause to go into get a Title III uh, 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 authorization for the actual content. And we agree with the clear distinction between content and uh, non-content information. Content still contained by Title III. We don't relax that at all. Non-content, we propose uh, not to the, under existing uh, law to be concluded in the, uh, uh, the pen register and trap and trace device. We do, of course, propose in Section 101 an extension of the pen register and trap and trace authority in order to update the law to the technology. The law was crafted at a time when analog communication through telephone lines using rotary phones was a standard. Obviously, everybody in this room and all, almost everybody outside of this room rely upon electronic forms of communication, including those who would not obey the law of the United States, including those who would not obey the law in order to commit terrorist acts. What we seek here is the expansion of the power to use pen uh, register and trap and trace authority exactly to the same extent that we have the ability to use in the telephonic lines in the world of electronic communications. Because if there is a different requirement for electronic communications, you don't have to be a very smart criminal to rely upon the, uh, the uh, uh, modes of electronic communications or whatever communications in order to evade detection by law enforcement uh, purposes. So what we're trying to do here is bring the law to parity with the technology at a functional level. And so uh, to answer Congressman Bauscher's question whether or not the subject line is content, we completely agree as a department and as a matter of law that content, I mean that content includes the subject line of an email. 
we do not get the subject line unless we have a Title III authorization. And so that's the basic, the, uh, the basic gist of, uh, the, of where we are. With respect to one other, one other uh, uh, core sort of Title III uh, amendment that I do not think is controversial, and I, uh, as a matter of fact, I have not heard any controversy. I would be interested if there were any controversy. We seek to get voicemail messages by the same, with the same authorities, either search warrant or subpoena, depending on the context, as we would get for a message tape machine. Right now, the, the law has an interesting uh, uh, disconnect in the sense that if I am a Luddite and only have an answering machine with a tape recorder on it, a person serving a search warrant or a subpoena on my house can get that tape with that search warrant. However, if I, like everybody else in this room, have probably moved to voicemail, a more efficient way of serving the same function, getting that voicemail would require a Title III wiretap authorization. It seems to me that there needs to be parity in the law with respect to the tape messaging machine or the voicemail, because there is no, uh, there is no, uh, no reason to distinguish between those two modes. And as a matter of fact, there is a great uh, reason to distinguish between live communications with content and the recorded uh, uh, communications. That's the approach that we are, uh, that we are uh, uh, going under. And uh, uh, I think that all of that we propose after we have this very, very good conversation will fall on the line of permissibility in the sense that we do not seek to redefine the line between civil liberties and law enforcement, but all we're doing is trying to update the law to the extent that uh, the criminals have already outpaced us in the use of technology without the corresponding legal authorization for us to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, enforce the law uh, with respect to those uh, efforts.